that the more media we get, the more quote unquote information we think we get, the more cynical we become, the more indifferent we become. There's a sort of, in our rich part of the world, there's a sort of fatigue. Fatigue about other people's problems. And of course, with the, the huge systemic financial and economic and social crisis that struck upon us exactly a year ago, somehow this shrinking down of our concerns um, is getting worse. And it's very difficult to tell people, okay, um, we have huge problems. Unemployment is growing, um, violence is growing, the condition of women in our societies needs huge improvements. And yet, look what happened in Guinea, Louise, 10 days ago. Ma a massacre. Women being raped in the stadium by the army. Women, dead or alive, put in containers and thrown at sea. Have you seen or read any coverage about that? Human rights, as you know, is, is also, I think, uh, a critical component of crisis, conflict, uh, prevention, and management in several ways. The first one is human rights violations, particularly when they escalate in severity and magnitude, are usually a very good indicator of deterioration towards potentially deadly conflict. It is, in many ways, the canary in the mine shaft uh, of uh, of deadly conflict. They are also inevitably a byproduct of war. And in that sense, I think we're more and more conscious of the uh, conflict uh, landscape within which we're operating. Uh, we know, for instance, that sexual violence is uh, increasingly associated with warfare. It's very difficult to determine whether this is a new phenomenon or just one that it has been more recently Exposed. I think it's the same thing with all forms of sexual violence, domestic abuse, incest, uh, 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 sexual harassment. Is it just a modern phenomenon? I doubt it. I think it's much more likely that it's now being exposed uh, with much more uh, vigor than it has been in the past. Often peace likely has been defined only as the, the ending of fighting and not as the beginning of uh, rebuilding lives. Um, I was in southern Sudan once and I asked a woman, what do, you, what do you define peace as? And she looked down for a second and she said, peace means I have toenails. Um, because for 16 years she was walking and did not stay in one place more than five days because she was kidnapped a few times by rebels, was forced to carry ammunition to, uh, to them and water and food and raped, obviously. And, um, and she lost her toenails in the process of walking for 16 years. And it, since the peace agreement, she stayed in one place and her toenails grew. And that's her definition of peace, is that she needed to stay in one place and that she actually has the ability that her toenails grew. So we need to understand peace from a toenails perspective. Well, first, we need to put more hands, the, uh, more money in the hands of women. Uh, still women, and girls particularly, get half a cent of every dollar that is invested in women and girls. Uh, for, so that needs to change. The proportion of money that goes to women and girls needs to change, simply. Second, when we talk about uh, food crisis and farming and all of that, we need to address the farmer as she as Secretary Clinton has said, and not he. They are 70% of the farmers. Third, we need to have peace negotiations, including fully women. Not one woman among 100 men, but 50% of peace negotiations needs to be women because peace is not about the ending of war. Peace is about the building of life, as defined by the civilian population who are living there.